Welcome back everyone to Paul's Tech News, a whole week of technology tidbits blended into a homogenous paste and then gently extruded through a tube and into your brain. This week, AMD promises to fix that annoying Ryzen USB connectivity problem. PC and Xbox gamers celebrate Microsoft's Bethesda acquisition, which leaves Nintendo and PlayStation gamers out in the cold. GPU hell returns and shortages might affect smartphones now too. And Ethereum is just taking too damn long to move to proof of stake. You know, I could go for some 80 proof and some steak myself right now, but dinner's later. Let's move on to tech news. Excellent. Today's video is brought to you by Micro Center, one of my favorite places to buy PC parts, whether it's online or at one of their 25 retail stores in the US. They have consistently competitive prices and an excellent selection of PC hardware and other tech goodies, as well as the custom PC builder on the Micro Center website. Use it to spec out your rig and it will show you parts in stock at your nearest store while ensuring compatibility with your selections. Then you can pick up or have their pros assemble it for you. So click the sponsor link in the description and don't forget to sign up for the free in-store gift. Last month, many AMD Ryzen users were like, oh, that's what's been causing it, as it was confirmed that an intermittent USB connectivity bug was affecting both 3000 series Zen 2 and 5000 series Zen 3 CPUs. Symptoms include USB port dropout, USB 2.0 audio crackling with DAC and amp combos, and USB and PCIe Gen 4 exclusion in certain scenarios. AMD followed up on the issue this week with a post on the AMD subreddit, and I'm happy to report that with help from the community, they have isolated the root cause and developed a solution to the annoying problem. And it's not just turning off PCIe 4.0 on the system that you've just built specifically with parts that support that standard. The fix will be included with a GISA update version 1.2.0.2, which AMD will be distributing to motherboard vendors this week, and then beta BIOS updates for affected boards are expected in early April. If you have experienced this issue, keep an eye on your motherboard's support page for an updated UEFI with a GISA version 1.2.0.2. And if you update and still experience problems, AMD recommends running their bug reporting tool and opening a ticket with customers customer support. Big gaming developer and distributor news this week. On Monday, Microsoft completed their $7.5 billion acquisition of Bethesda and its parent company ZeniMax Media, which also owns ID Software, Arcane, Machine Games, and Tango Gameworks. To the surprise of no one, Microsoft's Phil Spencer quickly revealed that the deal was about delivering great exclusive games for Xbox players that ship on platforms where Game Pass exists, as in Xbox consoles and, thankfully for us PC gamers, gaming PCs. Apologies Apologies to PlayStation and Nintendo gamers out there, but businesses are gonna business, and while existing cross-platform deals will still be honored, such as those with Deathloop and Fallout 76, but future launches are gonna be Xbox Game Pass only. Already as of Friday, 20 Bethesda games are now available on the Xbox Game Pass, 12 of which weren't there before, like Fallout 4, Morrowind, and The Evil Within. 16 of the games are playable on PC too, and many are available for cloud streaming, so Microsoft has probably achieved their goal of making their $10 a month gaming subscription service that much more appealing. Meanwhile, on Wednesday, Roblox launched its IPO and saw their $45 initial share price jump to 70 bucks, valuing the entire operations market cap at about $45 billion, leading many old people out there to ask the question, what the hell is Roblox? Well, it's an online platform and a storefront where users can go to play games. And in case you're wondering how they're doing, over half of US kids under age 16 played Roblox in 2020. These damn kids with their video games these days and their video game making, right? Because games on Roblox are actually built by their users with a suite of game development tools. So Roblox can skim by with about 1,000 employees while their gamers also make the games and can even monetize those games and make money themselves. So there's appeal on many levels. Definitely a company to keep an eye on if you're interested in the future of gaming, especially when you consider that their current $45 billion value is more than Electronic Arts, EA at $37.7 billion, Take-Two Interactive at $19.6 billion, Ubisoft at $8.1 billion, and Square Enix at just a scant $6.2 billion. Talking about GPUs fills me with dread and despair these days, but nevertheless, I still make the perilous journey to the underworld, across the river Styx, guided by Ferryman Jensen to the depths of GPU hell. It's not just GPUs that are in short supply in 2021. We've talked about the auto industry shutting down factories due to chip shortages, and now Qualcomm says they are struggling to meet demand. Smartphones could be next to suffer from the global squeeze. This is partially due to US sanctions on phone maker Huawei, which has boosted demand for alternative Android Android-based devices. Two Samsung reps reported that the shortage affects their low-end, mid-tier, and flagship models. And a Xiaomi VP said it's not a shortage, 
it's an extreme shortage. So perhaps some of our suffering will be shared by mobile gamers soon too. Now part of GPU hell for me is being forced to report on graphics cards that no one is actually gonna be able to buy. So I'm gonna try to run through these tidbits as quickly and painlessly as possible. The AMD Radeon RX 6700 XT launches next week on the 18th and leaked benchmarks published by WCCF Tech appear to show some good performance, outpacing Nvidia's RTX 3070 in some titles while dropping down to sub 3060 Ti performance when ray tracing is turned on, except for a few games that have been optimized for RDNA too. That would make it a pretty competitive card and a decent buy at 480 bucks MSRP, but it's not gonna sell for 480 bucks, is it? Meanwhile though, there are RX 6600 XT rumors as an EEC listing would appear to confirm that at least some cards will have a 12 gigabyte GDDR6 VRAM buffer, although that doesn't rule out the possibility of an also previously rumored six gigabyte variant. A gigabyte Radeon RX 6700 XT gaming OC 12 gigabyte graphics card was also listed on the Amazon Netherlands website for a price of 711 euros and 42 European cents. Uh, wow, that's way higher than the expected MSRP. Shocked Pikachu face, right? Uh, 711 euros is actually pretty optimistic, I think. So uh, buy that dip, you guys. GPU prices are high because of cryptocurrency mining though, and Ethereum mining on GPUs has been the go-to method for crypto miners for several years now, to the point where Nvidia is intentionally hobbling Ethereum mining performance on newer cards like the RTX 3060. This week though, a slight glimmer of hope shined down into GPU hell as a JPR report warned that the return on Ethereum mining GPU investment will greatly diminish with the Ethereum 2.0 fork that kicked off at the end of 2020, which transitions from from proof of work to proof of stake. I'm not gonna try to explain the difference here, but simply put, with proof of stake, your mining capacity becomes much more dependent on how many coins you already own rather than how many GPUs you're mining with. Don't get your hopes up too soon though, as the Ethereum 2.0 shift will occur in multiple phases, and if nothing goes wrong, it still won't finish until 2022. Speaking of Nvidia's unhackable GeForce RTX 3060 hash rate limiter, it was rumored to be hacked already as of this week, but in fact, it is still not hacked. It's been confirmed that the screenshot that started this whole rumor was not showing Ethereum mining, but used another algorithm called Octopus for the altcoin Conflux. So we'll still have to wait and see if the crypto community does succeed in hacking Nvidia's ETH mining algorithm limiter, but until then they can just continue to mine the myriad of altcoins that Nvidia did not block. Those can still be mined just fine. Thus endeth the GPU health segment. And now it's time for tech briefs, the good kind with the double seam in the back. It might look like you're pooping most of the time, but at least they don't write up your butt crack. A Russian modder named Vikon has created a 16 gigabyte RTX 3070 by removing the eight gigabit or one gigabyte GDDR6 modules from a pallet card and replacing them with larger 16 gigabit or two gigabyte modules. His video shows the desoldering and removal process as well as cleaning the PCB and adding the new modules, but there's more to doubling a GPU's VRAM than just the physical modules, so stability was an issue. Using EVGA's Precision X and a fixed clock speed to stabilize board power did the trick to stabilize it enough for 3D mark testing and some crypto mining. So check his videos if you want some more details on this fun, but admittedly somewhat impractical mod. Cloud computing company OVH Cloud lost a huge part of its data center in a massive fire Wednesday in Strasbourg, France, with one of four buildings completely destroyed and another significantly damaged. Fortunately, no one was seriously injured, but dramatic photos of the blaze are a good reminder that cloud storage can be impermanent. Customers relying on servers at the site have been advised to activate your disaster recovery plan. And that seems like good advice. I had no idea that data centers could just be built out of shipping containers. Finally, this MIT Technology Review article has no business being in the Tech Briefs segment. I'm just including it here for further reading. It's called How Facebook Got Addicted to Spreading Misinformation. And if you're worried about the ways that the internet has made the world a worse place to live rather than a better one, it does a great job of comparing Facebook's focus on growth and engagement versus the proliferation of controversial and divisive content that unfortunately does the best job of driving growth and engagement. If you've watched The Social Dilemma on Netflix, it's sort of in the same vein. I highly recommend checking both of them out if you're looking for something a bit more serious to chew on this Sunday. 
But there you have it, guys. That's my tech news for the week. Your feedback is always welcome, so please feel free to leave me a comment down in the comment section below while you're down there. All of the articles I talked about today are linked in the description if you're interested in further reading. You can also click the like button. If you enjoyed this video, check my store at paulshardware.net for a selection of excellent merchandise options with the thumbscrew logo, including new beer sets with my new bamboo coasters. And subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more videos like this one in the future. Thanks again, everyone, for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.